We are here at Abbotsbury Subtropical Gardens. It's one of the finest and most varied gardens in the whole of England. But we are not here just to give you a tour around. We aren't. Abbotsbury is a garden that I know very well. Uh, I work for a company called Watershed and we've done the press and media relations and photography and video for Abbotsbury Tourism for the last 10 years or so now. Um, we've been told that the Puya, um, the Puya Chilensis, is flowering, which is a once in 15 year event. Uh, so we're writing a press release about it and I'm taking some photographs here this morning in order to send out to the local news. Wow, there it is. I think this is the spot. Yeah, you just see the kind of green flowers and the orange stain. So let's take a few shots down here and then we'll, we'll, we'll get a few up. better close-ups. Hopefully the gardeners at Abbotsbury have put a sign there, so we'll be referring to that later uh, with some useful facts. Alright, we are at the spot. You just have to navigate around the other plants. Yes, be careful not to step on anything. Or get stabbed by anything. Yes. I have read that the Puya is actually carnivorous. Ooh! It has a nickname, doesn't it? It does. So its nickname, <laughs> I peer through the trees, its nickname is actually the sheep eater. The bottom of the puya is very, very spiky. Mm. So sheep get stuck in it and then obviously they can't get out and they sadly, they die. So it technically eats yeah. the sheep. Sheep will rot down and give nutrients to the plant. Yeah. And here it is. thinking this plant doesn't actually look that native to Britain. No, certainly not. You would be correct in thinking that. It's actually native to the mountainous regions of Chile. Okay. And mm -hmm. it's also related to the pineapple. There you go. Pineapple plant in the UK. Yeah. But actually Abbotsbury has its own microclimate, so it's very close to the coast. So in the winter it doesn't really get much frost. It's very warm in the summer. It kind of stays temperate throughout the year. So there are some very rare species of international interest mm -hmm. uh, in these gardens. Because they can thrive in the little microclimate. Without further ado, let's take some pictures of the Puya. Ooh, <laughs> You've got to be really careful with these spikes. You can see why it's called the sheep eating plant. It's going to be a Stephen eating plant. A Stephen eating plant. In the native Chile, these flowers are pollinated by many insects, but also hummingbirds. So the puya is full of really sweet nectar, which the honeybirds, uh, the honeybirds, <laughs> the hummingbirds absolutely love. So if you ever get to see any of these in the wild, then look out for hummingbirds pollinating them. I think I've got enough. I'm quite happy with those images. So we'll now go and edit them and I'll send them to my colleague Anne, who also works for Watershed, and we'll get them sent out to the local press. Hopefully there'll be some takers of this very interesting plant. Let's see what we got. Yeah, see how these pictures look. Let's load them in. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, that one's good, isn't it? Nice detail in the flowers. Yeah. All right, photos all sent. Uh, should we go home? Well, um, we have got the gardens to ourselves and the weather is nice. Do we have to do another garden tour? Well, we haven't done one for a while That's and true. we know that these guys like them. It's a very special garden, so let's come and explore Abbotsbury Gardens. Do you know anything about the garden? Do I know anything about the garden? Of course I know things about was, the garden. What year it was built? Well, it dates back to the 18th century. So this garden was originally the kitchen garden of Abbotsbury Castle. No more than say 50 or 60 years ago, it was completely refurbished and has been developed ever since. Mm. Uh, completely wiped out by storms in the 70s. So 80s, I think it was. 70s or 80s, yes. The one that Mag Michael Fish said, there's definitely not going to be a hurricane. Good afternoon to you. Earlier on today, apparently a woman rang the BBC and said she heard that there was a hurricane on the way. Well, if you're watching, don't worry, there isn't. Oh, this is cool. Oh, yeah, that's winter. cool. Yeah, everywhere you look, see interesting species of tropical plants. Looks a bit like a cauliflower. You'll find that we don't know anything about plants, really. It's not a banana plant. Um, but Some we, sort of palm. We do like walking around gardens, which is a common theme. We know nothing about them, but we like them. And we emerge onto the West Lawn. Oh, behind us is the pavilion. Uh, this was recently installed and is a permanent weddings venue. 
And the garden's fantastic for weddings and they have some fantastic backdrops for their photographs and it's a great space uh, to host any event, but primarily weddings. So one of the events they hold here at the end of the year is the Abbotsbury Illuminations where everywhere is lit up in these fantastic colours. It's just amazing to see. when they're doing the Abbotsbury Illumination, definitely book a ticket and come see them. If you want to find out more about all these wonderful plants and all their names, that one's pretty too. And all their names. A lot more informative than what we're giving you. Yes, rather than just that one's a nice colour. Yeah, that's nice, that's pretty. Then we actually filmed lots of little videos with the old head gardener, Steve. We did, yes. And so they are on the Abbotsbury YouTube yeah. channel. So Steve introduced various um, kind of rare species from his travels around Asia and Chile and um, the Americas. So there's plenty to see. There are. I've spotted that one, honestly. <laughs> She's off. <laughs> She's off. It's like a flat hydrangea. Oh yes. It's pretty. It's not a hydrangea, it's a woodwardia. Woodwardia. A woodwardia. Woodwardia fimbriata from Northwest America. It's very so, cool. As we walk around the gardens, I keep seeing flowers which remind me of facts about Abbotsbury. So this is a late flowering camellia. Abbotsbury's got a fantastic nationally renowned collection of camellias. So there's interest throughout the year. In January, February time, there's loads of color in the gardens and it's planted really cleverly throughout the year to maximise interest throughout the year. So. so it doesn't matter what time you visit here, there's always going to be something blooming. Blooming. Blooming marvellous. Blooming mar I was just about to say that. <laughs> I stole your line. You did. Ah. That's nice. I'm carrying on. We're what never going to get around this garden if she keeps going, going off different places. Granted, that is pretty. It's really nice with the dappled light behind, with the tree. I'm guessing that's a rhododendron. I think it might be. Quite a small leaved rhododendron, but a rhododendron nonetheless. Nice. I like it. I like it. I like it. Hmm. All right, now we can carry on on the path that you're on. There's a fantastic view from Abbotsbury, isn't there? There is, yes, with the viewpoint. I don't you, know. We even if you're on? not interested in gardens, you've got a fantastic viewpoint where you can see across pretty much the entirety of the West Dorset coast. Are we going to walk up the viewpoint now? This one's Why also not? pretty. Oh, there's so many pretty plants. <laughs> I'm going to walk up the viewpoint. Bye. Bye. <laughs> A big scary. bad wolf. That's oh, willow sculpture. Yeah, but he's quite scary. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Walking to me. Yeah, he is a bit. They do a good Halloween trail here. He'll be featured. an interesting little building. Got all the kind of traditional tools in there. And there was also a set of pictures showing the visit of Prince Charles, then Prince Charles, now the king. He's now the king. In 1993. That's as high a recommendation as you can get. The secret walk. So shh, keep this one between you and me. Well, it is sort of on the map. You are here, eight. Eight is the secret walk, so it's not that secret. Always got to burst my bubble, mm. haven't you? Come on, secret walk. 
Did you know that there are over 30 acres at Abbotsbury Subtropical Gardens? I did not know. And it's no. called subtropical because, because it's got it's a microclimate. A microclimate. Yeah. So it's subtropical. So lots of plants that grow here are usually found in much warmer climes. 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 Climes, not climes. climates, climes. We've walked past something very interesting. Let's back up. So uh, as climate changes and uh, we're coastal here, so we are susceptible to quite strong south southerly, southwesterly winds, um, generally sometimes things fall over, trees fall over, damage happens in the gardens, but they've made a feature out of it here. So a fallen trunk, a fallen tree has become a centerpiece. So this is the hill we were talking about that <laughs> leads to the lovely view at the top. You don't sound very enthusiastic. No, because it's a hill and I, I just you don't, don't do like hills. hills. So in the summer, this is a magnolia walk, isn't it? Yeah. So when magnolias come out, spring, spring, this is the magnolia walk yep. and it's full of magnolias. So in case I don't make it up this hill, that's the view that you'll see from the top. Go then, off you go. Wish me luck. The walk isn't that steep. It doesn't look that steep, but it feels steep. <laughs> it's shallow but relentless. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be knackered. Hence why there are lots of benches along the sides. Yeah. They knew what they were doing with this. Workout. Killer. Ah, midway break. Actually, I'm gonna do that. <sighs> no. Daisies on daisies. Yeah. Not at the top yet, though. No, I know, I was just having a little break. Mm. Little break surrounded by my friends. We even got daisies on my other top. Full on daisies. Yes. Daisies on daisies on daisies. Yep. to the top just <laughs> just yeah a few breaks along the way um yeah we're facing west that west? is west yes west west is charmouth and lime regis the rest of lime bay and behind us is chesil beach and facing east we have the expanse of chesil beach and chesil lagoon and down there in the lagoon is the abbotsbury swannery and we've been to the abbotsbury swannery before and we're going to go again but yeah chesil beach joins onto the isle of portland and we'll do a video about portland at some point and then just around the corner there is St. Catherine's Chapel, which is a landmark of Abbotsbury. Where's the chapel? Well, you need to... <laughs> you need to step a little bit. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> I found it. It's, it's there. Yeah, it's about there. It was hiding behind the tree. It's handy having these signs here, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I think I took these photos a few years ago. But down on the beach there, you can see some of the defences for the Second World War. The Fleet Lagoon was actually a place where the bouncing bomb was tested uh, for the Second World War. So it's a perfect sort of flat expanse of water. And they dropped bouncing bombs and tested them on the Fleet Lagoon. So, a bit of history. A bit of fountain of knowledge. Yeah. Just check that out. I'm sure they did. Doesn't say here. Oh, there we go, you see. Barnes Wallace. A... Tested his bouncing bombs. Somewhere shallow enough to reclaim his prototypes. Now's a good time to say if you enjoy our garden tours, then make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Now, one spectacular thing that people commonly miss when they come to the gardens rather than going left here, we're going to go right and we're going to see the view of St. Catherine's Chapel right through the trees. <coughs> so, yeah, the trees have been cut out to show St. Catherine's Chapel. So don't miss out when you come down from the um, out the, the big walk up there. 
<laughs> the big walk. Magnolia um, walk. The Magnolia walk. Make sure you turn right rather than turn left and you can see the viewpoint. So, Stephen didn't tell you any historical information about St. Catherine's I didn't. Temple. So, I will. <laughs> so, it was built by monks, the monks of Abbotsbury Abbey, that's really difficult to say, in the 14th century. And... It is a survivor of Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries because it was kept as a navigation navigation beacon for ships out at sea. There you go. So it wasn't a, a it wasn't a Henry VIII job out. No, because well it nearly was, but because they kept a light burning at the top of it, ah. they didn't. Huh. It's amazing you've plucked that knowledge just out of your head. I know. So, we're here at the rope bridge. Now, I've only ever been on this once because it's always been shut due to bad weather when we arrive. But, this big long rope bridge, it goes all the way across the lake. Okay. okay. Here it goes. <laughs> now, this is not for the faint hearted. Especially when you jump up and down. Oh, right? oh don't do that. I'll do that in the middle, that'd be funny. Straight after lunch. <laughs> You'll be seeing that macaroni cheese I was on about. <laughs> the gaps are quite... Um, they are quite big, aren't they? Yeah. They're big gaps. If you've got small feet like I do, it's quite hard work. Ooh. Oh, we're getting to halfway there. Now we're crossing water. Water. <laughs> this is precarious, isn't it? But it's fun. It is fun. But yeah, well, when all the water lilies are out, this would be really cool. You've always got to get one big kid that <laughs> swings the bridge, don't you? Okay, picture time. All right. There we go. We're in the rainforest. Not bad. So that picture... Will be on our Instagram. Will be on our Instagram. Make sure you're following Two Zany Brits. This is quite a feat of balance and camera work. This is difficult. Yeah. You're right back there. Yep. Rope bridge completed it, mate. Done. Ooh. We're approaching our first red bridge. We are. Yeah, lovely. We should set the camera down and walk across it. I expect we will. Across the red bridge. Ooh. These are common. One of the um, most famous bits about Abbotsbury Subtropical Gardens is these red bridges. They are well photographed, aren't they? Extremely well photographed, and yes, wedding couples quite often come down to the gardens once they've had their their ceremony and they come and get photos on the red bridges. The red bridge. How many yeah. red bridges are in the garden? Uh, one, two, three, four, I think. So there's three in this mm. bit and then there's, there's another one just up by the gunnera, which we'll see shortly. In a minute. Yeah. And the sound of flowing water throughout. Mm. Definitely makes you feel like you're in a jungle. Mm. Yeah, this, this, this woodland valley was surrounded by mm. huge trees. It's, it's very tranquil. Yeah. Mm. We're almost forest bathing, aren't we? We are almost forest bathing. Yeah. Pom-poms. Doesn't smell, but yeah. They look a bit like sheep. If I did little needle-felt heads, I could have them as little sheep. Could, yeah. They're quite big, aren't they? They are. Yeah, sizable. You're obsessed about that pom-pom tree, aren't you? I am, the snowball tree. I really want one. But I'd just spend my life just going like that to it. Yeah, I would. Just I delicately. And breaking them off, you would. No, <laughs> just delicately like. They just look squidgy, especially these big ones. Okay. Leave the pom poms alone. Stop touching the pom poms. Hey, Mickey, you're so fine, you're so fine, you're blowing my mind. They do look furry. They do. They have that texture of you just. Squidginess. Squidgy. Mm. I stopped playing with them. Okay, come with them. And we're just coming up to a huge gunnera tree. Yes. Yeah, they're looking very healthy, the gunnera. They are. Wonderful. 
So these are Gunneras and they are related to all dragonflies. They are related to rhubarb. Yep, so the big leaves, obviously not edible these ones. There's a fantastic walk just around the corner where we are shadowed by a canopy of gunnera. So this is just a taste of what's to come. Well, as I mentioned before, um, when trees come down at Abbotsbury, they're turned into features. Um, I've lost Claire, by the way. She's looking at butter uh, butterflies. What are you looking for? Dragonflies. Hmm, I found some. Anyway, <laughs> fallen tree behind me. Uh, it's been planted up with nice plants, nice ferns. Yeah, made into a feature. I've got the gunnera again. It's really spiky. Good for exfoliation. Nice scratchy feel. Although I'm allergic to rhubarb, so. Yeah, you best not um, rub Maybe your face I on it too much. Maybe I should start though. scratching it. Uh, cool though. I think it's cool, yeah. Tall, aren't they? So I'm five foot four. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, unless I've shrunk a bit. <laughs> and these are way they, taller than me. I think they can grow up to about four or five meters. Wow. I like this little one that's growing out, the new one. Oh yeah. Little baby one. And these are just, these are the flowers, I guess. They're just tiny, tiny little sets of flowers. Oh yeah. Cool plants. They're very cool plants. Mm-hmm. So that is it folks, our little tour of Abbotsbury Subtropical Garden. Yeah, slightly impromptu tour, but enjoyable nonetheless. Yes, so if you have liked this video, then please consider subscribing. Yes, please do. He's hit the like button as well and hit the notification bell. Yes. If you want to see more videos from us. Thank you. See you soon. Oh, oh, you meant I'm holding the gimbal the wrong way around. Yeah. yeah, no, you were right about that. <laughs> that was a great close. How do I? <laughs> I pressed the front How do I turn three around? times. There you go. Whee! Alrighty. <gasps> oh, got watery eyes now. <laughs> oh, this is going to be an outtake. Things we have to do as YouTubers. There we go. Something there. moved. Something, something there. It's probably a lizard. Don't uh, say that. There they are. There no. are. There is a colony of lizards here. Woo! Yeah, all right. No, I don't like Thank this. You. I want to get off this rock. I want to get off this rock. Stop the world, I want to get off. Let me off this rock. He's playing the bongos on my head. Uh... We like the bongos. Things I have to put up with. What's that fan? It looks big. Pigeon, is <laughs> Really big pigeon. Wow. Ooh, something smells a bit. Yeah, it's cheesy um. Feet. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the plants, isn't it? They all have different fragrances. It's a cheesy foot. <laughs> <laughs> You're really petrified of them. What is it, though? It's a it's a lizard. Really? Yeah. There's loads of them. There's little um, wall lizards. But they sound huge. <laughs> It sounds like a monitor lizard <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hay fever's really kicking in today. Yeah, oh. you've had really watery eyes, haven't yeah. you? I'm winking at the camera. It's windy up here. It is a bit breezy. You've yeah. Draft around my belly. Yeah. Hiding behind me again. There we go. I don't mean to be. Yeah. You're downwind. Or upwind. I'm upwind. upwind yeah. That's always dangerous with me. Um, yeah. Oh, I've got to clear my eye before I deliver the next piece to camera. Oh. Pardon me. <laughs> macaroni cheese for the win. Good old macaroni cheese. Yep. Macaroni cheese and leek. It really yeah, it was really nice, nice. wasn't it? It wasn't, it wasn't overly cheesy. No, or overly leaky, like oniony, and it had crispy onions on the top. If they have it on the menu when you come, choose it. It's delicious. Okay, we're at the rope bridge again. I can't say again. Oh, we've not been here yet. No. We're not at the rope bridge. We had the technical okay. difficulties with the microphone and the gimbal and the camera when we last went on it, so. Yes. So we're now at the rope bridge. We need a clean entry. Do you want me to Go do on. that again? Get off. Get off the bridge, get back on. <laughs> what doing? Nothing. 
Nothing at all. 